What radio, the music you want. With your host, Dee Dan. You're the new stud, are you? <laughs> How do you mean? Stud. Hot shot, brain. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. And maybe you could have me at your next event. I like to party with the people. Video dance parties and karaoke jams have been my mode of for of expertise as of late. Kind of excited about getting back into the partying real soon. Speaking of people like to party, people like to entertain. Coming up in the program today, Jacob Johnston. Who Jacob Johnston? You ask? Tra la la. Well, you're gonna find out real soon in your ears. As you listen to the What Makes You Famous pod- podcast. Did I say podcast? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> this week's shows, <laughs> yeah, a, a laugh. Uh, due to the novel COVID 19 coronavirus, there are no public shows and no private shows. So I passed my time away <laughs> by doing podcasts and getting to interview great people out there in the world. And one of those great people in the world is Jacob Johnston. So let's get him on Skype right about now. You know, Jacob Johnston is here in Conway, Arkansas. So we could have met face to face, but, you know, he's being safe and and, uh, cautious and vigilant uh, due to this coronavirus pandemic that we're having right now in April of 2020 as we record this. All right. (laughs) Enough of my babbling. Let's get into it with Jacob Johnston, Skyping Jacob Johnston now. How's it going, Dan? Jacob Johnston, my man. How's it going? <laughs> it's okay, man. Locked up tight, uh, you know, uh, pretending that my house is a prison uh, at this particular moment I, in time. <laughs> that's that's how everybody is, I think. <laughs> well, at least I got podcasts and people to talk to. And one of those people is you, Jacob Johnston. I'll let the people know who exactly. you are. Well, who, who is a Jacob Johnston? Well, uh, I'm, I'm 22 years old uh, from Conway. Um, just a, a your average college student that does some creative bits on the side. Um, I, you know, just I kind of dabble in the creative arts all around. Uh, a little bit of uh, I write some some screenplays here and there, make some films. Um, I was actually on schedule to make uh, film one before the uh, the plague took over. The plague. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as we record this in April of 2020, you know, and, and the people that are listening in, uh, you know, 10 years from now and, and 100 years in the future, uh, at this time, the the novel Corona, a novel COVID-19 coronavirus is upon us and and we have all been quarantined at home. Stay at home unless you need to go out and get some some dinner or some some groceries, you know, for necessities, but stay at home. So you were you were on on schedule to to make more creative things. All right, but perusing your Facebook picture at this particular moment, you're a fisherman, dude. Uh, that correct. I do. I do quite a fair bit of uh, fishing here and there. Um, yeah, I mean, I I really haven't been fishing that long. It was probably I don't know since uh, September, October. Um, yeah, I grew up on a lake, but I was like, fishing is horribly <laughs> stupid. That was that was kind of my mindset going into. It. I was like, why why would anybody want to do this? Um, and then, uh, the drummer in our band, me and Zach's band, I know, you know, uh, Zach, Zach Smith. Well, what band um, is that? What band is that? Uh, What's- we're called, um, oh, what are we called? <laughs> Riverview. That's what we're called. That's what we're called. We're that- called Riverview. Um, rumor view. Ri- Riverview. Riverview. Like river, like water. Oh, okay. yeah. Riverview. <laughs> A yeah. band so new that, uh, Jacob Johnston doesn't even know the name of it. <laughs> it's crazy, well it's man. been a rocky 
a while. We we started that band a long time ago. Okay. Um, but yeah, but our drummer in our band, he was he was like, hey, I he he went to uh, Jonesboro ASU for a little while um, before he went and just did uh, OTA school, occupational th- occupational therapy assistant, um, and he uh, he would go up there to this one spot. Um, in north central Arkansas on the Spring River and fish all the time. So he's like, hey, if you want to go, just uh, split the hotel with me. We'll go up there. I'll show you how it's done. And then ever since, I've been hooked. No pun intended. But um, <laughs> just, I mean, I just, I don't know. And then from there, I just, you know, just kept doing it. Um, learned a lot. And ever since then, I've, I've been 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 fishing quite a bit. Very um, cool, man. Hey, so, for those listening around the world, uh, most of the geographical locations are located in Arkansas. When he says Jonesboro, it's Jonesboro, Arkansas. When he says Conway, it's Conway, Arkansas. For those that don't know, in the U.S. of A. <laughs> you know, I do get people all right. over the world listening to this thing. So possibly they'll be getting to know you a little bit more, Jacob Johnston. I mean, I hardly know you. We had a little, uh, we shared a table, had a little dinner over at JJ's in Conway, Arkansas. Right. Uh, you know, listening Washington, to some fire you know, music. Josh Stewart. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I, I guess he had a special guest uh, jump in. I can't remember the name of him, though. Maybe you do. Maybe Zach you Smith. Yeah. yeah. Zach Smith. Zach yeah, Smith. Up there. Yeah. And then there was another there was another guy that jumped up as well, didn't he? I, I don't remember that that guy's name. He was sitting and there. Was, I, I mean, table. I had to leave a little early I because you. I'm in college. And so I had to, I think I had a test the next day or something. But yeah, I had to leave a little early. So I probably missed the other guy. Yeah. But that's all over now. No college. No school, nothing to do, yeah. but sit you, at home. You say that. There's still there's still schoolwork to be done. Ah, so okay. make sure of that. So you got online classes now? Right. How's that working right. out? Uh, it's not terrible. Um, it's, it's mostly, um, I got lucky. I have two professors that are retiring after the semester. And so they're like, ah, screw it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah, whatever. Just <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Here's wait, a little don't, don't, say it, don't say it publicly. A plus is for everyone. Okay, I said it. I said it. He didn't say it. I said <laughs> it. <laughs> but yeah, no, so two of them are just like, hey, whatever. We're done with this crap. You know, I don't feel like dealing with it. Um, no, I, yeah, I get not- it. I've, I've had a, a professor like that, you know, that taught me science. And thankfully, um, I'm pretty avid into reading. And I read the textbook and, and made sure that I learned what I needed to learn. But uh, yeah, he was pretty much through with it. <laughs> I guess he was ready, exactly. to, ready to get out the door. And do something else, especially, else with his life. especially right now with everything going on. Like they had very little time to prepare. Like our professors, I think, had less than a week to fully switch over or do their best to switch over. So it was kind of like a snap of a finger, and they had to be, you know, flip their classes upside down. So you Understood. know, I don't blame. But but th- this uh, time when you get to reflect on yourself, mostly. I mean, you, do you live at home? Do you have uh, family with you, or? Or are you living in a dorm, or what's the living situation like for you, Jacob Johnston? Oh, uh, yeah, I live I live in an apartment on my own with my uh, my little uh, lab beagle mix dog, wherever she might be right now. Um, but yeah, I live in an I've lived in an apartment since uh, my sophomore year. So it um, is a little lonelier for you, man. I mean, because a lot of people are, are feeling depression out there uh, from being stuck inside the house by themselves. And, you know, if they were uh, having trouble getting outside outdoors at all. Uh, for the most part, they're, I mean, they're feeling stuck. Uh, are you, are you feeling bad? Are you, are you finding other ways to, to, uh, get, keep yourself occupied besides talking to old keys, Dan on the, what makes you famous podcast? <laughs> yeah. I mean, for, for me, cause I've had, you know, bouts with depression and stuff, just like my whole life, like, just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, for me in this time, um, honestly, I don't, I don't want to say I don't mind it because it sucks, but it's not like, like, you know, for like real, like me personally, I'm not like the biggest social butterfly in the world. Just, I I wasn't born that way. Um, but, but like my message to people that are like, you know, you're a pretty talkative guy. I don't know if you're actually super extroverted or not, but, but like for people like you, it was like, you know, like we have like FaceTime, if you have an iPhone or, you know, you can use Google call or, Skype, um, you, it, like my mom, she lives in Bentonville, so it's not like I can like get my car and roll over to her house in the afternoon or something. Um, so for her, it's just like you know, make a phone call to her, 
every couple of days so she doesn't think I'm dead or something. Um, same with my grandma. She lives in San Antonio. So it's like, yeah, for, for, and for me, like, I'm not worried about going outside. It's, it's more about like, if I'm going to Walmart, like you avoid Walmart at all costs. Mm. Um, uh, but for me, like I've gone fishing probably four days this week. Um, and like, I don't feel like that's a huge problem. As long as you're not like having somebody else breathe down your neck, I think you'd be all right. Um, and then just, just wash your hands. Um, but like, but like, yeah, just go outside, go for a walk. Um, it definitely helps having a pet. I must say, um, just to have company. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's kind of like having a kid. <laughs> Oddly enough, it's like having a kid, but with less responsibility, less needy. Um, but yeah, just, just, you know, make use of, we're, we're in an age where, you know, your family's uh, click away at mm-hmm. any given moment. So just, just take, take use of the technology. I would say. Yeah. The little driving that I'm doing, I'm finding a lot of people outside, you know, they're keeping themselves, but uh, joggers and walkers and people just uh, walking their pets uh, as you, uh, as you say, and, you know, and I'm, I'm driving, let's see, I, I went to, uh, Oh, the, the marketplace, the Kroger marketplace. And, and yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, we're, I saw some people that I knew that I see almost every Friday night at, at the show that I do at the Reb. And, and I saw one lady in particular and she was like, oh, I want to hug you, but uh, I can't. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm cautious, I'm vigilant, but I'm not overly stressed by the, the virus. It's out there. You know, there, exactly. there's something out there. It's, it's a bad flu. Uh, you know, hopefully I'm strong enough to defend myself against, but I, I know that there's people that, that are not as strong as you or I that uh, may be more um, susceptible uh, to diseases at, at, at the at this time but you know moving forward from that i mean i know we're going to get through this we're uh, supposedly well i know president trump wanted to be done by uh, what tomorrow easter no that's I not going to happen. happen you know he said i want this done by easter and then the scientist said no no mr trump no president trump no <laughs> that's all wrong man that's all wrong we need more time but from what and, i understand and- uh, china is uh you know they were done in in they got quarantined in january 23rd maybe and now they're just starting to break out and, and get back to work so maybe three months how about that and and i did see that uh some company um just completed or is on the verge of completing a uh like an antibody test to tell if you've ever had the coronavirus um so like and they said they'll roll them out in like i think the next week is what they said yeah they so want like in the next week you could go yeah. down to walgreens get tested and if you've already had it you're free to go yeah you know? they, they want to know if the people that have had it are immune now and then possibly they can use your your bloods or antigens from you to help to make uh, to help other people and and that exactly. that, that sounds great i mean I, uh, science love science man uh, you know and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i hope there's a scientist out there or many scientists saving the world uh, that 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 hasn't been my bag baby uh, I've, I've been talking into microphones since 1986 and i like it <laughs> but but you actually play instruments man and i'm jealous of you about that you know when did that start the the whole instrument playing for jacob johnston oh goodness uh 22 now oh it's been a while <laughs> um well i want to say yeah okay so in middle school um i i i grew up in hot springs um okay and went to, uh, it's yeah, went to Lakeside High School, uh, middle school, elementary school, whatever. All pretty much all of my my uh, you know, uh, you know, elementary school, junior high, all that. I went to Lakeside, um, and I had this band director named Miss Chipman, um, and she taught all of the the. Uh, she's not there anymore, but when she, she was there when I started and I decided that I was going to play clarinet. Oh. And so I picked it up, uh-huh. um, you know, learned how to play it, played it all the way through high school. Um, and then I would say two, eighth or ninth grade, I decided I was going to pick up guitar. Um, and so in eighth or ninth grade, you know, it was just kind of, we, my mom was like, Ooh, we're going to take you to get lessons from this guy or whatever. I showed up. I was like, 
why the hell am I here? This is worthless. Like, I just wasn't about getting lessons or whatever. I was like, you know, I just want to do this on my own. Okay. Um, and how did you do it on your own? I, man, it was just, so like for me, when I was growing up, um, I was all about the, the classic, um, you know, rock and roll and metal. So like, you know, Guns N' Roses, ACDC, Metallica, Megadeth, all that kind of stuff. I, I was um, hoping you weren't going to do that, you know. Uh, when you said classic rock, I said, don't say stuff I listened to in high school. I'm not old. Don't say stuff I listened to in high school. <laughs> yep. It's all stuff I listened to in high school. <laughs> um, but even I'm, before that, it yeah. was like, like I loved the Beatles. Like the Beatles, I bought, I think, almost every album they ever put out. Like physical CDs. Um, like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, um, stuff like Elvis. I was all about it. I loved it. Um uh oh, so the age, the like, age old uh, question, uh, struggle, uh, Beatles or Elvis? Be careful. Oh, the be- Beatles for me. <laughs> Just both of them? Is that an answer? <laughs> I mean, there can't you can't be go wrong one. with either. Yeah. But for me, I feel like the Beatles had, uh, just from a, a commercial perspective, they had so many more hits than Elvis. Mm. Um, at least in my opinion. They just had, man, the Beatles just couldn't make a bad song. Oh, yeah. Not to say that Elvis ever made a bad song, but every song they put out was just awesome. Yeah, I mean, they Except got jams. Maybe they like definitely got jams. I, I've never been to the right. Beatles' house, though. I, I've been to Graceland many times. So uh, I guess See, I have I've that. I've never been to either. <laughs> I guess I have that I've affinity. A key to the Heartbreak Hotel uh, in my pocket uh, at all times. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There you go. The, all right. But yeah. So, so you, you've been uh, doing it. For, who, who got you into the classic rock? Mom or dad or both? My dad, my dad was a, uh, he was my sure as hell wasn't my mom. My okay. mom hates, me. it wasn't until I got, I would say, uh, more recently, like, cause nowadays I listen to either, you know, a lot of pop punk and, and, you know, hardcore and death core, death metal. And so I just blared in my mom's ears. So now, now at this point, my mom's like, as long as they're not yelling at me, I'm okay with it. <laughs> that's kind of how she is <laughs> you're a bad bad man you 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 annoyed uh, your mother <laughs> but like my dad when he was growing up it was all about like uh you know 90s 80s 90s hardcore punk you know black flag minor threat all that kind of stuff and so like for 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 him for me it was like you know like that's pretty cool stuff like that and like the guitar is real aggressive so it, i don't know it just caught my ear and so like my dad, he you know loved Guns N' Roses, Van Halen, Metallica, all that. So I mean, that's where it all started, really. Um, and then for just from there, I kind of developed my own taste, I guess you would say, um, mm-hmm. and kind of progressively got worse, per se, quote unquote, worse. <laughs> all right, so so you got into the music from from your dad. He he gave you a good musical education. What what did he do for a living? What well, and where is he from? Uh, he is from everywhere, I guess, technically. Omnipresent. Uh, he was a, I like a that. Military, the dad. <laughs> he's a military, he was a military brat. So he went to like five different high schools. Okay. Um, you know, his, his dad was in the air force. Um, but he, he was born in, I think Phoenix, somewhere over that way. Yeah. Um, but, but he, his whole family and everybody was from hot springs and little rock, that whole area. So he's, I would say he was an arcade in a heart. Um, but yeah. Did you get to know your grandpa, uh, that was in the air force, uh, at all? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What yeah. did you, what did you get, from, he, what'd you get from an old air force man? Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but man, he was picky. The <laughs> pickiest man I've ever met. He was so damn picky. Um, <laughs> just like he was, yeah, I guess that was just the military in him, but, uh, it, it just, if, if it wasn't his way, it was wrong. Let's put it that way. I've heard um, stories. <laughs> yeah, but 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 I heard a lot of like, uh, well, not from him. Um, but I, I met this guy named Ed Brown. He's one of my uh, my grandpa's best friends before mm-hmm. he passed away. Um, and they were in Vietnam together. My dad, my granddad, blew, blew planes, and um, Ed was a some kind of ground unit of some sort. I don't remember exactly what, um, but we, we actually did a, uh, in high school, I was in a, like a film class, like a film, like you learn how to create films and, 
and all the aspects of what makes a good film and that sort of thing. And me and my buddy RJ, we uh, we created a documentary on this guy about his experiences in Vietnam and like perspectives from someone that grew up in Vietnam or in like America during Vietnam and a soldier and just kind of how their perspectives differ and are similar. I, I was it was very cool. It was very cool to say the least. See, that's pretty cool. You did you you're a documentarian in that respect that you got that guy's story which is one of the reasons that I started this podcast to get people's stories. I'm getting your story, Jacob Johnson and, and you're man. So we run along same, uh, you know, similar I- ideas and interests, but I, I never did get into the, the film aspect of it. I think that's pretty cool where you get visual as well. Uh, I was, I've been thinking about adding that to the podcast, but tell me about, about your film school and, and, and what did he think of, of your documentary and uh, you know, the, your classmates and, and uh, ultimately what grade did you get? <laughs> I got an A on it, but, um, yeah. So like, like our, our, to go off what you said, like everybody's got a story. That was what our, um, our, our teacher said. He was like, man, like you can go up to anybody on the street, talk to him for 15, 20 minutes and they can say, Hey, you know, they'll say something and you'd be like, that could make a film. Like he's like, everybody's got some kind of story they can share. Um, so yeah, so he had two or three, three film classes, I believe. Um, he had two like base level, which was what I was in. And then he had like an advanced one. Um, and so everybody kind of, uh, he tasked us. He was like, Hey, go out, look, look around, look at who, you know, um, and, and find a story that we could relate to, or we could empathize with, or we could, you know, that sort of thing. Just find somebody, that has something to share. Um, and I was like, you know, we were thinking me and my, my partner, RJ, um, we were like, man, I was like, there's this guy. It'd be, be really cool. If I don't know if he'll talk about it. Cause you know, war is war. And especially if you're a boots on the ground soldier, it can get pretty brutal. Mm-hmm. But I was like, man, if, if I'll, I'll call him and be like, Hey, you know, if, if you'll talk about it, I understand if you don't, but if you'll talk about it. We really want to, um, make a make a, a, a film documentary about what what happened in Vietnam um and your story in Vietnam ultimately. Um I was gonna do it on my granddad, but he had passed away like a year or two before that. Um but so so I called him up. I was like, hey Ed, what what's up? Um you know we're I'm in this film class and they want us to make documentaries documenting somebody's story. And I know you're in Vietnam. Um and I know I can totally understand if you don't want to talk about it because, you know, if you can't, like if you talk to somebody that went to Iraq or Afghanistan, like especially if they were a, a like an infantry soldier or whatever, it's it's pretty hard for them to talk about it because, you know, the stuff you see over there, we can't really comprehend how, you know, brutal or whatever you see. Um, but I was like, hey, I understand if you don't want to talk about it, we'll find something else. And he said, come on over, man. We'll, I'll talk to you about it. Um, so yeah, we went over there for three days, I think it was two or three days, um, and just talked to him about Vietnam and his stuff. Um, and he, he gave us all these pictures of, you know, the base that he was on, where he was at, um, pictures of him in his little spotter planes that he would hop over the top of the trees to do reconnaissance. And, and ultimately we, uh, we got a, I think it ended up being like eight minutes. It was an eight minute documentary on Vietnam. I'm huh. uh, talking about his story mostly, but, uh, we had a teacher at our high school at the time, um, who, um, he, he was a teenager, I believe, or a young adult when Vietnam was in full swing. Um, and we talked to him kind of about what, what like, what was life like in America? while they're overseas in Vietnam um, and talked to him about that. And then at the end, it wrapped up and said, hey, like, did we win in Vietnam? What were the effects of Vietnam? Um, and, and it was just a cool experience to learn about somebody else in a different time because, you know, I'm a 90s kid. I was born in 98. So it's like, you know, I didn't live through anything crazy, really. You know, I was three years old when 9-11 happened. Like, I don't even remember 9-11 besides seeing, you know, stuff on TV or whatever when they're doing uh, 
you know, the nine 11 tributes or whatever. Um, but, but like, it's just cool to learn about another time. And, and I think in the, in the, the only way we can learn about the future is to look at the past. Like if we don't learn about what we've done in the past, we can't fix it going forward. And so I think like, especially documents, document, Ooh, documentaries, Mm -hmm. um, documentaries like especially over i mean over anything um is a, is a good gauge to show how you should go forward in the future like um i like to watch a lot of documentaries i don't know if you picked up on that but i watch a lot of documentaries um and one i watched was on um on the food industry food inc if you haven't watched it definitely go watch it where you can find it on the internet for free which Don't streaming platform? <laughs> you could say the uh, name. it's not on. Not on I don't any know of the big if three. It's on Netflix, mm-hmm. I watched it on the internet somewhere. Okay, like most college kids do. No, I I, I like uh, documentaries myself. I want to learn from the mistakes of others. I can't live long enough to make them all myself. Right, but but this this documentary, Food Inc., it's about kind of um like big um like corporate farming stuff, like and it it, it specifically. A lot of it's based on chickens mm. um, and like they're pumping chickens full of steroids and whatever to make them real fat and they can't walk. I mean, it's just a, if you haven't watched it, it's definitely a good watch. It's, it's pretty, pretty rough to watch, but I think it's <laughs> good for us as a society to realize that this is going on. Um, and should we get rid of all of it? No, I think, I think some corporate power gives us, um, opportunity as a as a society. Like you look at Walmart, they're based out of Bentonville, Arkansas. They're they're our big. Which I'm sure if you're listening around the world, you probably know what Walmart is. Mm. Just they're they're huge. They're the biggest company in the United States, and they're up there in the world. Um, but like Walmart, they're huge. You know, they employ thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people, and without them, we'd be paying ten bucks for a carton of milk. Not literally, but but I mean. I think Food Inc. is is kind of they're touching on that. They're not saying to at least the message I got out of it was that corporations aren't bad unless you you know like until they kind of have the power to do whatever they want to, um, and at that point then it can be dangerous. But that's besides the point. I it, fantastic documentary. Um, so it's a documentary on the food industry itself, not uh, downplaying whether. Uh, you know, food is bad or food is good. It's, it's industry is, is what they were talking about is what you're saying. Right. It's, it's, it's about like, about what the, the, the larger corporations and companies, like, I think Tyson was one of them, Oh, but another, like, like a shots fired another Arkansas industry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but it's, I think it was Tyson was one of them. I don't remember. Don't quote me. Uh, okay. It's been a little bit, but it's talking about like, what what it because because what they do is they basically pay farmers to quote unquote grow chickens, um, but you know like they're like it, it, it shows you the process of how they grow their chickens or whatever. Um, you know, <laughs> did it change your eating anything. habits, Jacob Johnston? Um, no, no, okay. no. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Okay, because I, I I've seen um, some some ways that they treat animals and. Yes, so everyone knows, you know, the, the the steak, how it gets to your local grocery store. It's not the coolest process on that animal. I'm sure that animal's feeling pain, but I don't know. Does it change my my eating habits? Or were animals meant to to be eaten? Uh, you know, they're they're a good source of protein. Uh, you know, it, it, they 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 turn grass into protein for us. You know, call it a miracle, call it science, call it you know nature. But uh, yeah, th- th- that's what that is that that's what they're there for. I think, uh, you know, that's just me. What do you think, Jacob right. Johnson? Man, you know, are are there ways to to make our food less processed? Sure. Um, is that going to happen overnight? Absolutely not. Nothing's going to happen overnight. Like. What, like if you take anything political, like I'm not going to bring up a specific topic, but anything mm-hmm. political, you're not going to be able to flip a switch and it's going to be changed overnight. Yeah. It's going to take time and repetitive action to make changes to things. 
Yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm hearing the science of people growing steaks without, uh, you know, w- without the actual animal. I, I believe 100 years in the future, we'll be eating a steak that was never actually a living thing, you know, so, but that's right. Just, it's just not now. It's it's not happening. So I'm going right. to go get a steak. <laughs> exactly. Hey, but I'll eat exactly. my share of vegetables as well, you know, or, but are vegetables living things? You can argue that as well, you know, and, and, and the, the, the vegetables themselves, when they're being harvested, how many animals get killed when you're tilling the ground? Uh, do ants and, and bugs not count? Uh, you know, I, exactly. <laughs> there's, there's argument on every, every edge of the spectrum. And I know we're going on a, on a different tangent, but, but I'm, I'm picking a 22 year old brain, a 22 year old college student's brain, uh, you exactly. know, a musician for that matter. Uh, yes. We touched a little bit about, about your, your music and, and where that started. And you say mom didn't have anything to do with it. Let's get back to her. What, what did mom do? Uh, what, what did you get from your mother? Uh, uh, <laughs> I get told stuff all the time. I don't personally see it, but well, except for like a few things, but like my mom was always um, like, I kind of got a mix when it came to academics um, of mom and dad. My mom was like, if I get a B, it's the end of the world. And my dad was like, hey, if I can get D's, I'm rolling just fine. <laughs> uh, so like for me, like I want to excel, but like I'm not going to kill myself over making a B or, you know, if you know, if I can make straight B's, man, I'll take it. <laughs> um, you, you know it's like like so, my mom so not a unified front i mean I, I i know a lot of moms and dads they go off into the rooms for the kids that are listening uh, you know they go off into the rooms they how are we going to treat this how are we going to do this they get together huddle okay that's where we and then they get, come out of the room and and, and give it to the child but it, it looks like uh mom was uh one way and dad was another way and how did that make uh young jacob johnson feel you know it was good. My my dad was really uh, handy, like with stuff. Like he, uh, when he was a kid, uh, or not a kid, I would say a teenager, probably teenager, college. Um, he installed sprinkler systems cool. to make money um, while he was going to college. So, like, you know, he could fix anything. He could fix anything. Um, you know, he would he could work on a boat. He could fix car stuff. Um, but he was also really smart. Um, and so, like, he was an accountant. So that's what I'm going to school for is accountant, accountancy. Um, oh, that's great. And so, like, he was real book smart. But he could also fix anything. Um, and and my, mom, my mom growing up was a PT, physical therapist, um, which she doesn't do that anymore. She got too old. Yeah, but um, that's great too. My goodness, helping people. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's like, thank God I'm not in PT anymore. It'd be a bad time to be a PT right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't <laughs> but, get uh, maybe with a 10 foot pole, uh, articulating yeah. people's legs and arms and <laughs> helping exactly. them. But she was, but she, she, she quit that, uh, I'd probably say five years back. Um, she, she just, she got too old. And you know it's a very physical job. And yeah, that's so, the second time you said your mom's old. Stop it! She's not old. No, She's no, a wonderful no, 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 person. no, 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 no. <laughs> for, for the the course of work, she she got she got old. I mean, she's forty nine, I think. That's not or old. I'm fifty one. That's not old. <laughs> well, well, I'm saying, but, but for PT, you know, um, for PT, it's just kind of like you, you have to have a certain, uh, I'll say, structural integrity, you know. To be able to, especially she was working in a hospital. And so it was like people that literally couldn't walk at all. No, nah, I get so it. Like she was like work, carrying. Man. It is. She were 300 pound people on her back and she's this 130 pound woman. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it, you know, it just, it ran its course and now she works at a library. So excellent. Excellent books. <laughs> Dig it. Exactly. Yep. And uh, are yeah. you, are you a reader, sir? Me, oh, it, <laughs> you know, I'm a. I like to read articles, uh-huh. but not books. Let's put it that way. Like articles, I could read a bunch of articles all day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm more of a short, short, uh, short term reader. I'm not like, like my mom. Goodness, she can read books like I've never seen. Like she'll read like 400 page books and be like, I don't have the patience for that. Uh, but but for me, like I like to read short articles a lot. Um, but as far as books go, I've never been a fan of reading. I don't have the attention span. Like some people can just sit down and read 50 pages of a book mm. in an afternoon. 
I don't have the attention span for that. Hey, that used um, to be me. I mean, get your get your news in bu- in bite sized chunks, which is great. I mean, that's a that's a way to do it. Uh, I'm more books on tape. I mean, uh, you know, in podcasting, uh, that's where I get my news. Uh, lately, I've been listening to a, a science versus podcast to f- figure out are we are we all uh, doomed with this thing or what? But uh, <laughs> that's that's besides the point. But yeah, I used to be a reader when I was. Uh, I guess when I was younger than you, uh, but uh, you know that has since fallen away to the wayside. It's not a bad thing. Y- you can learn other ways, and you're getting your your news in chunks. Right, and for me, it's not like like I don't mind reading something that's like five or ten pages, but like that's kind of where I max out. Any like <laughs> you know anything above that, I get kind of you know I get kind of burned out pretty quick with reading, unless it's something I'm very interested in. Um, so like in, oh goodness, I'd say eighth grade or something, seventh grade, something like that. Um, uh, we had to read uh, kind of a biography, kind of, it was kind of like speculation slash biography. Anyway, this, this author uh, did a big, I wouldn't even call it a biography necessarily, but it was about the whole plot um, before and after of killing Abraham Lincoln, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Oh. Um, and so, like, it talked about, like, how all of the, like, all the conspirators and stuff, what they all did beforehand to set up for it, and then afterward, how they fled, what ended up happening to them. Like, that, I didn't have much of a problem reading that. I read through probably a lot of it um, without being told. Yeah, because um, it was probably flipping interesting. It was like a, a documentary. It was a piece of history. So maybe if those, exactly. those kind of books came around, you probably would. Uh, delve to them and you know short stories I, i'm into it i get it so yeah i mean i'm interested in in lincoln and you know you you flip the channels and, and people say channels still I, I have no channels man i have i have netflix hulu amazon disney that's it there you go exactly. <laughs> and maybe maybe youtube you know but uh, yeah. that's where i get my viewing but uh you know as soon as, as soon as something comes up like uh oh world war ii eh, let me stop there <laughs> you know <laughs> you know, oh, astronauts on the moon. Let me stop there. I, I, I feel you, man. I like the documentaries. I like the history. Jacob Johnson. Exactly. Like for, like for me, I've always been a history buff. Like well, I was the, I would say I'm the teacher's pet. I was the teacher's pet in high school when it came to to history. I took every history I possibly could, within reason. Um, just it was something I enjoyed. You know, that and I had awesome history professors um shout out kevin pumphrey that's that's who i had had him three times um for world history and that was hot springs or or conway by that time that was hot springs i didn't move to to conway till college i got you okay Um, yeah so he he was he was awesome he uh he he was kind of innovative in his teaching methods um like you know how like if you have a teacher that you know i'm like my grandma told me this she was like man i hated history and it was probably because of the teacher you know it's like we had this battle in 1717 and a hundred people died and then they retreated he just kept it casual he's like yeah we had this one ruler and he was uh you know a d-bag and then he got shot like it, it, was, it kept it real casual and fun um and and he he had this he called it the uh the wall of fame um and it was he he in his own time he went through all the people in history and ranked them one to a hundred mm. of who was the most influential person in history. Um, and he had one for his U.S. history and one for his world history. Um, and like for U.S. history, it was George Washington. Um, that was number one for for the U.S. Correct. How about that for the world history? I think it was. I want to say it was like Albert Einstein or one of those people. I can't remember. It's been a while. Huh. Um, but yeah, and and every day he'd come in and do one or two people and be like, um, you know, what what uh, what what makes this person special? What's one or two things you can look at these people and be like, hey, this is what they did good for the world or here's what they did bad. Like Hitler was on the world history list. Oh, for I sure. Mean, <laughs> that guy was a jerk. Whether, whether he was good or bad <laughs> yeah. is the question. Was he influential? Absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, man. Like, he, he screamed a whole uh, a whole world uh, leader, uh, a whole country leader, uh, Mussolini, into getting into a war. 
I mean, Mussolini didn't want to be in a war, but he, he went and screamed at him for about 13, 14 hours. And you know okay, what? here's my thing. Okay, I'm there. <laughs> my thing on Hitler is regardless, you think he's good as bad, good or bad, he was a smart guy. It, it, you can't just like essentially take over a country, you know, in a couple of years without being smart by yourself, pretty much. Mm. Um, and then, and then you execute an entire race of people while keeping others off your back for a good while. Cause like he was, he had death camps for a while before anybody really got involved, you know? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, take it as you will. He wasn't a good guy by any means, but you can't necessarily say he wasn't intelligent. All right. He's a jerk off, uh, off the subject. <laughs> He's trying to trigger me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, but exactly. uh, I mean, give me the top 10, the, uh, the hits of who, who influenced history. You know, uh, if that was one of your your uh, f- uh, areas of expertise uh, growing up, uh, the the things that you wanted to excel in, uh, who 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 were the hits, uh, uh, and and how did they influence you? Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? Who I, I mean, who hits? who were the ones that that influenced you the most? The way that they thought, the the historical figures. Your uh, if Got you it. were on Bill and Ted's next adventure, uh, who would you grab from <laughs> history and? Uh, and put in your telephone box and bring with you to, to uh, do the, the historical uh, review. Uh, well, you know, one that really jumps to mind, um, not even for like musicality. It's a, it's a musician, obviously. What, what would you expect? Uh-huh. Um, but, but Kurt Cobain is one that I would pick out of the shell of people to, to bring with me. Um, not not because his music was like the best music out there or that his music was was you know sensational which you know there's some people that hate nirvana there's some people that think they're the best band that's ever walked this earth <laughs> um and that's not the point but but just that it, he was about being different um when you listen to nirvana it's not the most pleasing music let's put it that way <laughs> you know it's it's about being dirty about being nasty uh and, and it was just different. Like, like Kurt Cobain, when he wrote Teen Spirit, he probably wasn't like, yeah, let's write us a number one hit, <laughs> you know? But it just happened that way. Um, it, it, so for like me, like Kurt Cobain was kind of like, Nirvana was the first kind of modern kind of rock, you know, I'm not going to say they're metal necessarily, but like kind of the heavier side of music, if you will, you know, kind of, you know, they got screams, they've got, you know, nasty vocals, whatever. Uh, and so like for Kurt Cobain, it was kind of like, what's, what is, 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 you know, how can you be different? Um, and don't be afraid to be different is the big thing. Like he didn't care that he was different necessarily. Sure. He had his, you know, drug alcohol problems, but like it, it, he was about being different. Like I remember watching on TV or not on TV, on YouTube seeing, uh, you know, a video of Kurt Cobain on MTV back however long ago. And they were like, Hey, you can't play that song. And he was like, okay. And then he played the song anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, it was kind of like, don't tell me what to do. Um, let me be me. Um, and so like, that was kind of big growing up. Like, don't, don't be afraid to be different, be who you are and don't let anybody tell you that you have to be somebody else. You know, so you, that was you just gave people a gem. It, there's a reason that they hired you and say they hire you and, and Zach uh, to come to a show and they say, Hey, don't play that song, but you know that you want to play that song. You know, that you have to know that they hired you for a reason because people were going to come to this place. They were going to get themselves out of their seats into, into this place and, and come to see the two of you, or I don't know. I don't even know how many people are in your band. We'll, we'll get to that. There's, to there's see, four of us. There's okay. To see us. the four of you play. You know, so they, kn- you have to know, yeah, you can say, okay, sir, we'll see what we can do. But then you know that you have to play w- what the fans came to see anyway. Right. I mean, you're, you're right. giving people gems, man. Yeah. But like, like for me, like, um, I, I was a big gamer growing up. Still I am. Um, and I don't know how familiar you are, familiar you are with games and stuff. Well, let me see um, what I'm looking at here. I got a PS4. I got a uh, PS3. Oh, okay. 
I'm looking oh, at a, uh, let's see, a, a Nintendo uh, Switch, uh, Wii, uh, Wii U, and some kind of knockoff Nintendo. It's got like 600 games on it. Okay, well, then, then you should know. You should know. But, like, <laughs> let's take Call of Duty. That's what I played a lot of growing up. Um, you <laughs> Never know, heard like, of it. They made four or five great Call of Duty games, and then they introduced jetpacks. I don't remember if you – do you remember this controversy? No, I don't, I don't play Call of Duty, but yeah. Okay. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I'm aware there's a game they, called Call of Duty. They made, they made Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, then Modern Warfare 2, and Modern Warfare 3, and they were absolute gems. Okay, and then they were like, hey, let's put jetpacks in it. Mm. And everybody was like, this is terrible. And then everybody, like, it was like, it was pretty unanimous. Like, everybody was like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. So what did they do? Rationally, they did it again. They put better jetpacks in the game. Yeah, who doesn't want jetpacks? See, and that's the point I'm getting at. Like, if, if, if you, especially if you have a, if you have a community of people, like any, platform will you got to give the people what they want especially in the entertainment industry um i mean so i i see what you're saying like you know you got to give the people what they want mm-hmm. well you know going to court kirk cobain you know dying does <laughs> this may be more but and it is dying it does lend to your to your uh your legend you know and then dying tragically even more so man so yeah, I mean that that could be part of it, but as a as a man, as a person, I do believe he had some some ideas, some thoughts that that may have not been the norm, and and you can take a little a little knowledge from him in that respect. Uh, certainly, I mean, and uh, it seems like you have, man. You, you took a little a little something from from what Kirk, Kirk Cobain was trying to do and who he was. Continue. Um, so you want me to give you another? person from history that i looked up to yeah give me your top five i guess we'll we'll go with that we'll we'll do something that that uh every interview ever made with anybody (laughs) has ever done these are these are typical a lot a lot of my people are gonna be musical just because you know when i was growing up depression was bad i was you know bullying every kid goes through that you were bullying um no no i was the bully (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah but know, anyway you know it's, i know what you, you know, meant i was trying to add a little levity to it i'm so sorry you got but, bullied. You know, how so it you know it is what it is i mean you know i was um just kind of you know i'll just say i was a strange kid uh-huh you know nothing too crazy but i was different you know i was into you know emo emo music and and you know death metal and you know, that's like at one point when I was like, you know, 14, 15, 16, all I wanted to listen to was the most aggressive, heavy, nasty music I could, which I've mellowed out a little bit. You'll be glad to know. But, at, at, you know, when you're especially when you're a young guitar player, um, you know, and you haven't really matured musically, it's all about like, how many notes can I play? How nasty can I make it sound? You know, it's not about like, does this fit the song? Well, it doesn't matter as long as it's crazy. You know, um, but yeah, so like just growing up, like that was kind of, I I mean, I was just kind of, you know, the school I went to was very, I don't know. It was very, mm, I don't want to put this conservative, eclectic, uh, no, like it was just, it was a wealthy area. Let's put it that way. Okay. And so like, you know, like most kids that are in that area are going to be the upscale, you know, type children. Um, and they're not going to be listening to death metal. Let's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of, I mean, if, some of it was bullying and some of it was just kind of like, Hey, why am I not fitting in here? Kind of thing. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, we'll see. Top well, five. Well, now that you're out of your teenage years, I mean, you could tell now that, okay, a lot of kids go through that. You know, a lot of a lot of kids try to discover exactly. who they are, and, and, you know. So it was uh, like, for I was the like, kids why that are, am I yeah. so dumb? Yeah, for the kids that are listening. Like for me, it was like, it, well, go ahead. Yeah, for the kids that are listening, uh, this these are more gems that you're you're putting out there. You know, n- a lot of people struggle with identity and 
and who they are. You know, I, I wore Hawaiian shirts. And I still do. I wore Hawaiian shirts and then parachute pants and then preppy shirts. And then uh, I dressed like a surfer some days. And then I dressed like Michael Jackson <laughs> other days. So, you know, trying to figure out who I was. <laughs> and thankfully, yeah. I, I had a best but friend like for- that, that did it along with me. You know, we dressed like cowboys <laughs> the next day. <laughs> so it's good to have at least one friend. Did you have at least one friend that did it along with you? Um, th- no, not really. Dang. No. Jacob um, Johnston, all but, alone. But like, here's my thing. Here's my thing. And um, like kids in high school, they don't have the foresight to see that like once you get out of college or get out of high school, people are a lot more accepting. Mm-hmm. Like in high school, it's all about the clicks, man. You better find you a click or you don't have any friends. I mean, am I wrong in that aspect? Not even a At little least. bit. <laughs> so like when I got to college, it was like, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. They're just like, hey, man, are you not a dick? Well, good. You're my friend. So, I mean, for the most part, obviously. Um, but like w- once you get out of high school, like everybody's kind of like, you know, we don't care if you're overweight. We don't care if you're weird. As long as you're not, you know, an a- an a hole, we 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 could care less. You're you're gonna be our our brother. Um, so yeah, I mean, and and the identity thing doesn't get any better. I mean, I'm 22. I still don't know what the heck I'm doing with my life. But you know, we're taking a day at a time, <laughs> and you'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, but you're heading in the right direction. You're doing the school. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, getting uh, becoming a, a nice upstanding citizen of the of the future using your your mind to uh conduct uh, do people's taxes and other accounting needs uh, i'm that, not going to be doing taxes you can forget that ah, but that's a job yeah. that that's going to be necessary uh, especially right. now in these trying times the economy is going to poop if you will uh, there was one oh, statement that, that said it's not a, a recession it's the great depression part two uh, you know, it's. I it's would happened. say it's as bad as the Great Depression yet. Heading there, but but it is. It's worse than a recession for sure. And, or it will be. And what kind of accounting is your dad doing? Is he still into it? Uh, no. So my dad passed away when I was eighteen. Oh, 18, 17, 18, yeah. four or five years ago. Um, but he was not really an accountant. Okay. Like, he he had a CPA and he did um. He was like the CEO of Little Rock Diagnostic Clinic. I don't know if you're familiar with that in Little Rock. No, no but I'm right sure next we could find it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so he was the CEO, CFO there for a while. Um, and then he um, he had a taxi business in Hot Springs, the Hot Springs Taxis. Interesting mood landing choice there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, my grandpa owned it as well. Okay. Um, so he kind of just like, passed it down or whatever um and then he did some consulting work for this um awesome company called sigma supply company in hot springs they're very large um they sell like packing supplies to different companies like walmart and fedex and blah blah blah, whatever um but yeah he did consulting work there so he was kind of he wasn't your average like Yep, here's my cubicle in the CPA office. Oh, Dad's um, a hustler, he man. Really- <laughs> he had his hands in different pots. Yep, exactly. So, that's that's what he did. And that's where you're heading into. You're going to have your fallback job, and then you get into music. You know, a lot of people can that's say, right. you're going to be a starving artist. No, you got something to fall back on. You got a, an insurance job. I think you could do something with your accounting uh, degree uh, with something, but uh, then you'll get... Oh, I could definitely. Because I'm going to go get my master's. I'm I'm graduating in uh, May. Hey, well, quote unquote, top. graduating. Yeah. Uh, but then I'm going to start back into my master's. I'm going to get a master's degree. Excellent. Um, what do you think you're going to be able to do MBA. with that? Teaching? Anything I want to. And it's all. You got an idea <laughs> at all? Are you working in the field uh, right now? Or uh, So right now, I mean, I'm not currently working there. Mm-hmm. Um, but... It's uh, it's it's this little small family business. I mean, they're not small, but there's not tons of people that work there. Mm-hmm. Um, they're called Hilliard Enterprises. They're in Maumel. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I responded to an ad. Um, you know, everybody that works there is family, essentially, family, or they know the family, or whatever. 
Uh, there's probably, I don't know, in the office, there's only like six or seven of us, eight of us, um, including me. And I responded to an ad. They were like, we need some help. And so I was like, I will help. And they said, okay, took a chance. And, you know, they treat me really well over there. Um, shout out to April. She'll probably be listening to this. Um, but she's kind of my supervisor, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, she's like my immediate supervisor. Like if I need anything, she's the one to go to. Um, but yeah, they just took me on and they were like, Hey, you know, we, we need some help. We'll help you learn. Um, and, and they took a chance on me and it's worked out so far. Well, Um, you know, they worked with school. They've, they've been very good with school. Like, like, you know, if I had a big test or something, they're like, Hey, that's at the forefront of your mind right now. You need to do well in school. Cause if, if you don't do well in school, you know, it, it it's only gonna, when you get into the field, it could backfire. So yeah, they were always like school's a priority first. If you get your work done, we don't care when you're here, how you're here. Just, you know, as long as you get your job done, we don't care when you're here. Just, just, you know, school's your first priority. So take initiative in that first. That sounds like a really nice, nice boss to have. Nice job to have. Now we they're, live in the same, awesome. in the same town. We both live in Conway, Arkansas. So typically I would do these face to face, but you didn't want to do it face to face because you, you work with seniors. Is that the job that you're, you're working with? Oh, seniors? Don't say that if they listen. Uh, yep. Yep. I don't mean, say wh- that. Wh- they're not seniors. What else do I call them? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, no. They're, they're, most of the people that work there are a little, uh, they're kind of getting toward that, that danger zone, so to speak. Okay. Um, I think that's even um, more, more offensive. You're saying that, uh, I'm 51 years old and I'm heading towards a danger no, no, zone. No. <laughs> no, no, no. But like a lot of the people that work there are in their, their mid upper fifties, I would say. Okay. Um, and so like, that's kind of getting to that, like, at least from what the, the scientists and the doctors say, like, you know, 65, 60 plus is where the virus really starts to take hold. And right. Be right. Right. People more, more deadly. Got it. Um, and and a, and a lot of them up there are smokers or ex smokers. So yeah. like that's the double whammy. Um, and so I just wanted to be be careful. Um, I actually haven't been to work in a little while. Mm. Um, but you know, better safe than sorry. Vigilant man, vigilance. It's good. No, it's good to have that yeah. vigilance. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not that worried about it right now. But hello. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm not that worried about it right now. But uh, you know, I am vigilant. <laughs> so uh yeah but right, and uh, there's a difference between panic and vigilance right being safe and freaking out i'll say hello to people but i won't give them hugs <laughs> that. all right so uh yeah you mentioned you know you're, you're funny you mentioned walmart earlier i was listening to npr uh just this last couple of days ago and there's a lady that does uh that does steel work she's from pennsylvania and she has a steel company and she does steel work uh, you know, has clients all over the country from coast to coast. And she mentioned Arkansas by name. She was so funny. She said, you know, I, I do business with all people all over the country, you know, and, and people are running it in, in different ways because of the virus. And, but Arkansas is like, uh, you know, business as usual. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Walmart. Walmart started to do their part. That was two days uh, ago. You know, that was two days ago. I know it's changed a little bit. I saw there's a well, line well, with six foot across. Yeah, they have, they're only they're only allowing, you know, uh, I think it's like you know fifty people in the store or something. Which for a Walmart like superstore, that's a that's a quite a few people. Right, right. And when you could fit a, a thousand people and they'd all get lost in there, easy. <laughs> exactly. So, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> all right continuing on with the life the life of jacob johnston man you, you learned some some stuff growing up in school and from your parents so far uh, you know but then you know you you you're going to accounting but you have this music love you started with the clarinet and then you got the guitar uh, i guess we can go yep. there man I, oh, what happened uh, you know the chicks weren't digging you with the clarinet you'd say no nah, let me put this down <laughs> No, man, you know what, you know what it really was, was it was, it was, and I can, I can pinpoint this to a certain band, Mm -hmm. um, Metallica, like just, I, I heard Metallica, I can't tell you what song because they're all amazing. 
But no, no clarinet Metallica. in Metallica. Let me just uh, make that clear. No clarinet in, in yeah, Metallica. Yeah, there is no clarinet in Metallica okay. that I know of. Good, good. It may be hidden, but it's not. <laughs> it's not audible. Uh, <laughs> but like for me, it was like, man, I want to be able to play guitar like that guy. And it wasn't even the crazy solos. It was like the riffs, man. Like I've never wanted to be a lead guitar player. Mm. I've always like I just want to write some some awesome riffs that are just like I can bang my head to that stuff. Mm. Like that's the kind of guitar player I've always wanted to be. Um, and so for me, like that's where it started. It was like Metallica, like like Guns N' Roses was good and all, but like you know Guns N' Roses is very shreddy. Like they they like to have the crazy solos. And like for me as a guitar player, that was never, you know, I'm not the most technical player. Mm -hmm. um, but damn it, I can play fast and I can write some, you know, play some, some headbanging riffs. And like, that's just kind of the guitar player I always have been. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of what sparked my interest. I was like, man, I want to write some nasty riffs like that. Um, yeah, but you didn't want to take then, lessons. You, know, you said this, this lesson stuff is bogus. Uh, how did you learn how to play guitar, man? Uh, you know, it was hours upon hours of just kind of, for me, it was just man learning song after song after song after song after song after song. Um, you know, like, you know, everybody learned Smoke on the Water or Iron Man. You know, sure, I started there. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just kind of like, I want to learn to play songs. Like, like it was just like any riff I could find, man, I'm going to learn how to play it. Um, remember, I remember one of the first riffs I learned. Oh, this is embarrassing. But one of the first riffs I learned was the bleeding by five finger death punch. Um, it was just kind of like, you know, it's super easy riff. Um, but, but, you know, when you're just starting, it's not, you know, it's got hammer ons pull off. Um, mm. any of you guitar players will know what I'm talking about. I have no idea um, what you're talking about. <laughs> it's, it's, it's for a good, you know, guitar player. It's only been playing for like a couple of months. It's not there are techniques that are, are, they're not the easiest to do mm. effectively anyway. Um, but yeah, so I was just like, damn it, I'm going to learn it. So I just grinded it out until I could play it. Um, it wasn't great. Yeah, no, but you know, I was having fun and that was the main thing. It was just like, you know, if you're having fun, you're not going to put it down, learn songs you want to play. So like, that was it. Like my guitar teacher was, he was like, yeah, we're going to learn this chord and this chord. And I was just bored out of my mind. I was like, this is stupid. Um, and so like when I quit those eventually, um, I was like, yeah, I'm going to learn Metallica. Cause like my, my guitar teacher really wouldn't let me, um, like learn songs necessarily that I wanted to cause he thought they were too advanced. Um, and that's not to say he's a bad teacher. He was a fantastic teacher and I would have picked up a lot from him had I stuck around, but you know, I'm an oblivious little 13, 14 year old. And so, um, it was like, yeah, rebellion. Yeah, you know but, everything but, at that age. Come on now. Exactly. <laughs> but but like I was like, and then I went home and you know I was learning heavy metal songs, hard rock songs, you know, classic rock songs, whatever. And I was having a blast. And so like at that point, you just you don't want to put it down because it's fun, especially when you're playing riffs that are easy. But man, they sound amazing when you play them, and you can just kind of jam out to them. And so that's kind of that's kind of how I learned. Um, and then you know stuff like. Uh, and then when I got older, it was just kind of, you know, I joined the jazz band my senior year in high school. That'll give you a well-rounded uh, education. Oh, boy. It was a, it was rough for the first part of it. <laughs> um, just because, like, being a guitar player that came from learning by ear to having to know guitar music theory and sheet music and blah, blah, blah. It was an experience, I'll tell you what. And they were all like, yep. We don't know how to help you on that one. <laughs> They're like, we don't play guitar because um, they didn't have anybody that played like guitar seriously. Um, but I was like, okay, I guess we're going to try it anyway, <laughs> even though I have no clue what's happening. Um, so yeah, I just I did that, um, and you know, did my anything, band director. Anything good come of that? Yes. Okay. So my band director uh, Scott Blinds. Wonderful band director, by the way. Um, shout out to him. He'll probably listen to it. I'll send it to him. How's that sound? <laughs> um, but he he was like, hey, um, you know, you know, all region. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that, Dan. 
I, I've, been to, I've been to high school. I figured there's a region, and you're all of them. Well, yeah. So all region is like the uh, the regional competition for musicians. Believe it. Uh, um, and so like you go in and you try out. Um, you, there's like a prepared piece of music you play, and then they make you sight read, and then run a scale, um, and they pick the the best. You know, for guitar, I think it was one or two. I think no, it was one. It was one because I was the only one that made it. Cool. Um, but yeah, so so they pick. Basically, they're just finding the best in the region, and then you, if you get into the uh, the all region, you get into all state, which is a statewide thing. All the regions come together. Um, but yeah, so I tried out, and by some miracle of God, I made it. I don't know how to this day. I don't know if the other two people didn't show up or whatever, but it happened. How long I made have you been in. playing by this time? <laughs> How how long had you been playing at this time? Hmm. Oh, oh, it's 13, 7, probably five years, four years. All right. So you're hard work. Uh, it wasn't a miracle. You, you put the work into it, man. Well, well, <laughs> Don't well sell the yourself thing is, I just didn't, jazz music, <laughs> jazz music is, is, is much harder than, than rock. I'm just going to say it right now. It's, it's not, it's it, not the same. It wasn't fusing jazz. It wasn't that stuff where you're just like riffing. It was stuff that was more structured. A- am I right? I right. Mean, it that? was like real, real deal jazz. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But but yeah. So there there I made it in all region, and there was this guy, this uh, the guy that was supposed to be the. Uh, once you make all region, basically all the all region, you know, people that made it in, go and they for two or three days, um, they practice with some top band director or whatever in the state mm. that uh, teaches them, you know, a couple pieces of music and then you perform it at a concert at the end. So our instructor, and this couldn't have worked out more perfectly. Our instructor that was going to be the instructor that time was this guy named Les Pack. And he is a jazz guitar teacher at um, UAM, Monticello. Just make it clear, not which, Les Paul, right? Les Pack. Not Les Paul, Les Pack. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so UAM has one of the top band programs, period, in the state. And so like, and not to mention, he was the guitar teacher there. <laughs> so like, he knew his stuff. And he, I could tell, he was like, oh boy, this guy is struggling. And so he taught me basically patterns to follow that I could do. Um, and my Lord, it was a, a lifesaver. <laughs> But he was like, yeah, if you, if you ever need to play a C minor or an A minor, this is the shape you do. And he showed it to me. If you need to play an E major or an E major 7 or an E major blah, 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 or a C major, whatever, it's like, this is the pattern you use. And so like that saved my life um, with jazz anyway. Gave me some idea of what's going on. Um, and so like that, that was huge with jazz. Um, and kind of, that was the start of where I kind of, stop being crazy i guess crazy in musical sense mm-hmm. um he was kind of because like jazz guitar isn't about i mean complexities there obviously but it's more about what can i do to fit this song um and that's kind of where that structure started it sounds so, like an eye-opener man sounds like that was a turning point uh, good good ups to that man big yep. ups to teachers fantastic yep. I'm telling you, I had a, my music, our music program at Lakeside High School was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Um, Both, both jazz. um, We had this crazy teacher that was insane, (laughs) insanely talented. Okay. Not insane. He was was insanely talented. You put a qualifier on that. He, he was insane. He 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 was insanely talented. He was, he was was kind of a, I don't know. He was kind of, I don't want to say wild, but he he was, he was kind of. He was wild in a fun way. Just say eccentric, you know, because creatives are eccentric and that's a good word. (laughs) Yes. But like if I ever went to him and was like, hey, what the heck is going on in this song? Mm -hmm. He'd be like, well, that's this, this and this. But the way he explained it was kind of like. To a seventh grade mind, which is where I was at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have all the knowledge. I was just kind of like, man, if I put my fingers here, it sounds like this. That's kind of where I was. Mm. Um, but like he was, he, and, and music theory, he taught me, his name is, uh, 
Mr. Neil Moss. That was his name. Goodness, I'm getting old. But um, <laughs> his name was Neil Moss. Um, and like, I remember one day, I was like, hey, can you teach me music theory? Just basic music theory. And he was like, okay, give me a day. I'll figure something out to teach you. And we spent 30 minutes one day talking about, you know, um, the circle of fifths. You're probably not familiar with that, but, you know, it's a basic music theory thing. Um, and he explained it to me very simply. And I, it was like my first step in learning music theory and how it fits in. So, yeah, my uh, my music education in high school was great, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the circle of fifths, the, the relationship among the 12 tones or pitches, the chromatic scale. Uh, who doesn't know about right. the circle of fifths? <laughs> <laughs> you give me gems, man. You give me stuff to look up. Giving the people stuff to look up. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to learn how to be a, a great guitar players by the end of this podcast. I can tell. Nope. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. I mean, but were you writing music as well? Mm, I, you know, I was. Oh. Um, so my YouTube channel, which is just my name, J A C O B J O H N S T O N. I don't know if they're still up there. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if I left them up there or took them down because they were pretty crappy songs, but I did it anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, I was 17, 18, and maybe that was my freshman year of college, too. Hey, you just, you just got a new subscriber to Jacob Johnson. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. Uh, I don't post anything. On oh, there wait a minute. All, so. <laughs> That's not you, Jacob Johnson. <laughs> That's a different Jacob Johnson. There's a whole lot of Jacob Johnsons out yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so like, uh, you know, I was writing little just like acoustic songs. Um, actually, my first thing I ever did, and after this, I can, I have a CD that I could send to you if you wanted to. Uh, Neil Moss, he was, he set me up with some, some just like, they were like drum loops mm -hmm. that he made um, and gave them to me. And with just my guitar and a computer and some cheap, I think it was free actually, free recording software i um just like i mean recorded my own like a little jazz improv thing and yeah, there is no excuse for creatives not to put out their own stuff if you got a microphone and a computer you pretty much you can do do anything maybe a little demo maybe it won't be studio quality but you can do at least a little demo and put it out there to the world let people know exactly. what you can do that's excellent man yeah, and I just did it. I mean, it turned out terribly. <laughs> of course. Back on it, but no, I did it. That's what matters. <laughs> but yeah, so like that was that was my first taste. Um, and now I'm in Riverview, which is my first band that I've ever had. Oh, first okay. So Riverview, Riverview is your first band. That's the first incarnation. You, you've never played in front of people before? besides you know jazz band concerts or okay whatever no not really okay nothing nothing intended all right so how did riverview start let's go there you know so so me and tyler clark um who was in i don't know how familiar you are you are with the the local music scene like like the pop punk stuff uh, not very, but uh, you can school me and the rest of the people listening on this. Yeah. So, so he started off, you know, when he was, shit, I don't know, something like mm, probably 16, 17. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyler, Tyler was in some, you know, hardcore, metalcore bands, whatever, indie bands. Um, and then his first big band was called Slick Rip. Um, they were a pop punk band out of, the Little Rock area. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think some of them were in Little Rock, some in Maumel. Anyway, he was in that. Um, and then they broke up. Um, and while he was in Slick Grip, I was like, hey, the whole time I was like, hey, we should write music together because you're a drummer and those are hard to find around here for some reason. Um, so he was like, hey, man, I'm sorry. I'm too busy. Um, but but he he they broke up or whatever. He's like, Hey man, I've got some free time. Come down to, um, well actually first he's like, Hey, send me some stuff that you've been working on. 
some little demos or whatever that you've been working on. Just kind of test the water, see, listen to him. He's like, holy shit, this is good. <laughs> so uh, he was like, hey, come down to my apartment. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hang out, jam, blah, 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 whatever. So we go down there, and man, it just clicked. Um, went down there. We were all all buddies, um, and so me and him. Well, actually, no. He recruited one guy, and I recruited one guy. Uh, at the time, I was the guitar player, mm-hmm. um, and I was the rhythm guitar player. The lead guitar player also sang. His name was Trevor. Um, and then my buddy that I met in college by chance, actually, I hit him up. I was like, "Hey, man, you're a great guitar player. Could you play bass? Because we need one." And he was like, of course. Um, and so that's kind of where it all started. We all jamming in this guy's apartment uh, in, a, in a spare bedroom, annoying the neighbors, get, getting security called on us, you know, normal musician stuff. And then Noah and Trevor had to step away for hmm. personal stuff um, that I'm not going to say on here. Well, it was kind of rough. Let me back you up. Is, is there... Is there any hard feelings for a guitarist to be asked to play a bass? I mean, is there, is that a downgrade or is that a, a lateral move? Uh, is that, you know, the necessity of the band? What, what is that? You know, you know, I think it all depends on the musician. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you're a musician or a guitar player, I think is where that lies. Mm. Um, like if you're a musician, it doesn't matter. They could have you play the oboe. You'd be stoked, you know? <laughs> Um, if you're just a guitar player and you're just guitar minded, I could see how it could be kind of a, a, a bad move, so to speak, kind of a disheartening thing. They're like, man, I'm not good enough to play guitar. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it all comes down to, um, to kind of, do you understand necessity over your wants kind of thing? Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean. We we needed a bass player and Noah was like, heck yeah, I'll do it. Do you have I don't have a bass. Do you have one? I was like, I have one. It's like deal, we'll do it. Well, all so, right. You know. <laughs> so two of your guys yeah. left the band and you needed two more guys. Uh, what happened? So for I would say six months or so, me and Tyler were just writing songs by ourselves. And Tyler will be the first to admit this. He is not a fan of songwriting altogether. He is not a that's not his, he likes to, to play shows. That's his big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so more or less, it was me writing songs and him writing drums to the songs I was writing. Like I'd write like a little simple part and then he'd come over and write something similar to it, but add some flair. Um, and we did that for six months, kind of off and on. And, and, you know, when you've only got two members, it's hard to stay focused on the, the goal, you know? Um, but so I would say in, November, December, January, somewhere in there. Um, Zach um, stepped away from Bad Habit. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you know that. Yeah. Bad Habit. Do you know Bad Habit? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so Bad Habit. I've he had them all on this podcast. They're great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. But he, he stepped down from there. You know, he was, he was like, well, he was, he was wanting to step away, but they still needed a guitar player. So he was like, I'll help him out a little bit here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like, Hey, I got a little extra time. Let's do it. Um, and we, we, he actually tried out on vocals first. Um, but we talking to, um, to Tyler, we were like, man, I just don't know, you know, like, does this fit the personality of our band kind of thing? Mm-hmm. And we came to the conclusion, like, you know, Maybe it doesn't, but he's really good. (laughs) We got to have him in this band. So we're like, hey, come play guitar. And he was like, of course I'll come play guitar. Um, And I was like, man, we still got to find a singer. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll just do the singing and we'll find another guitar player. Um, So I put up a post on Facebook. It was like, hey, we need a guitar player. And our guitar player, Brady, was like, hey, man, I'm interested. Um, and he, he he's really good too. We we struck gold, in other words. Yeah. Um, and turns out he went to 
middle school or high school or junior high with Tyler um, in Maumel. And so that's where we're at um, currently. Still don't have a bass player, but you know we're not playing shows or anything yet. We're going to record some songs um, and send those out before we play any shows. That and we can't play any shows anyway. Yeah, I mean, now... now is your time to practice, you know, get, get better, uh, uh exactly. put, you know, get, get a nice clean space and disinfect it real good and, and go play six feet apart. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like, but like, I, you know, in, I think we, we've grown as I, I know I have since yeah. starting when I was 16, you know, my songs when I was 16 were, Oh, Oh my God, they were terrible listening back to him like what the heck was i thinking and then like uh the song's called knuckles that's all i'm gonna give okay. but <laughs> it's a banger of a song um but like it's it's kind of a it's a song about um kind of i don't know it's kind of like it, it, it's a song about kind of finding who you are and kind of like the war that goes on inside of your head when you're, you're always anxious and you're always, you know, depressed. Um, and, and it's just kind of about that. Like, like you feel so isolated, but you're not really isolated. Yeah. Um, so that's what that song is about. Very timely. <laughs> right. And that was the first song that we completed. Like, like it's a done deal. Is it out there? Um, not yet. Not yet. It will be. Okay. We were about, we were honestly about to record it in the studio, yeah. but then, you know, stuff happened. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that will be soon after. Yes, um, sir. Yeah. So that one, that one's done like a hundred percent. I actually wrote that whole song or 99% of it. Um, I'm yeah, sure you gotta be excited to put that out into the world. That's like, that's your baby, you know, put it in oh, creating so something and putting it out there and seeing how people respond. <laughs> Yeah, but we had this, we had a singer that was like, he came to one practice, I think. Yeah. Um, named Garrett, who actually wrote the lyrics to that song. Excellent. I was like, man, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, we, we, we were like, we'll just rock and roll with it. Uh, of course we got his permission, uh-huh. but, um, but we were like, man, that is, he is good. Um, but yeah. So that's kind of where we're at there. Um, just it, it, you know, it's been a slow process, but you know, we we've seen there have been like a band that I'm gonna shout out is called Go for Gold. Um, they're amazing. You should get them on this podcast if they'll come on. I'm I'd sure they be would. Happy to have them. <laughs> I can get you in contact with them. They're A plus. Um, they actually just got signed to In Vogue Records, wow. which is a they In Vogue is a it's fairly large. It's not like a little like mom and pop record uh-huh. it's it's pretty they've got some substantial acts on it um yeah they just got signed they released two new singles that are absolutely insane they're so good fantastic um, man i've been going back and forth with different artists that have been on this podcast uh, about record companies do you really need them can you do it independent can you put the music out on apple and and itunes i mean apple itunes and other places spotify and, and make your own money or do you need the distribution. I guess it depends on how, how far you want to go. Right. Yeah. I mean, for me, for me, I think, I think record labels have a, a place as far as recording goes. I don't think record labels are, um, a necessity, mm-hmm. especially these days. I mean, you look at like, like I have a buddy named Dale. He, uh, he produces like, uh, EDM dance music. Uh, uh-huh, cool. Kind of in his bedroom. Yeah. He, he has, he has a pair of headphones and a computer. Yeah. And a software. Oh, you yeah. know, he spent a hundred bucks and now he can make the same music that somebody like Skrillex could make or something, you know? Oh, yeah. I talked um, to a, a guy so named like Jordan Cox. He runs as Corden Jocks and he does like this, this laid back, uh, slow, easy, you know, beats that he's making and putting them out there. Yeah. He does it. He does it wherever, wherever his laptop and, and, exactly. uh, and headphones take him. He could do it, you know, sitting in the middle of a park or whatever. <laughs> It's really cool, man. Right. So like, like, like for me, like that part, like me, I could record a full band in my apartment. Yeah. Like easy. And it would sound, it would sound decent. It wouldn't be, you know, great a studio, but it would sound good. I could make do and it would sound good. Yeah. Um, but as far as distribution goes, 
I think it's kind of 50 50. I mean, record labels have better distribution connections, promotional connections, I think, most of the time than, you know, a person like me would have. Um, but, but that's to say we have social media now. Exactly. And you can, you know, you can put up a post that says, Hey, buy a record. And the next day it could have 5,000 shares, mm -hmm. you know, but, but I definitely think record labels could help in terms of distribution. I don't think they're a total no go as far as distribution goes. Um, oh, yeah. that, and they can provide you with money that a lot of people don't have. Yeah. I mean, I, I know social media has, has got, has, uh, taken the, the record labels out of the equation for the most part, you know, because people, people will tell you all these horror stories. I signed with this label and they took 90% of my money. Whereas you sign with no label, go independent and you get a hundred percent of smaller money. You know, I don't, you know, say uh, the, with the record company, you can make a million dollars and keep a hundred thousand, but by yourself, you can make a hundred thousand and keep a hundred thousand. You know, so, so what's better? Right. But the, <laughs> you know, here's my thing though. Like if you get, if you make a million dollars in sales uh -huh. and you only get to keep a hundred thousand, right. You're still getting that notoriety though. Yes. If you're good. Yeah. That but that's that notoriety is not paying your rent, baby. <laughs> well, that, no, no, no. But I'm saying long term. Yeah. Like say you signed a two album contract or a one album contract. Yeah. Quit that and you can do it on your own. And you've got the base there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, if it, it's how long, how far are you willing to go? How far are you wanting to go in this? And, uh, yeah, exactly. if, if you're wanting to, to make this your life, uh, your life's career, Hey, go for it. Uh, do your thing, do what's best for you. Uh, right. is that where you th see yourself exactly. going? You, you want to be Mick Jagger out there 70 years old? I don't know that I want to be. <laughs> I don't know that I want to be Mick Jagger. He's one <laughs> ugly man. Hey, <laughs> yeah, but he gets girls, man. It it doesn't That's matter. True. He's a rock and roll star. And like twenty. <laughs> exactly. All right, man. As we're as you we're know, rounding this you know, out, I, yeah. Well, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just gonna make a joke about Mick no, Jagger. No, go, go ahead. Make that joke about Mick Jagger. I want to hear it. I mean, you know, like, I mean, the thing is, is. Mick Jagger, like that's the dream right there. You're playing since you're, you know, 20 years old until you're dead. I mean, that's the dream. <laughs> yeah. And you're successful a lot of that time. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the dream. Like any band, like Metallica, yeah. um, you know, Guns N' Roses are still around. Yeah. ACDC, like all those bands, like being able to play till you're about to be in the a hole in the ground. Like that's the, that's the dream. I, I've been talking on microphones professionally since 1986 and I, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. I like exactly. it. I, I, I don't, I want this to be my life forever and ever just chatting with people and, and getting interviews and promoting people. It's what I like to do. And I'm promoting that, you, hey. Mr. Jacob Johnston. <laughs> you know, and if you enjoy it, you don't work a day in your life. You better believe it. All right. As I was looking for your YouTube videos, I did come across a uh, skate fails cringe test with Jacob Johnston, uh, Dakota yeah, Frank. That's, <laughs> that's, that's Oh, that is me. That is you. <laughs> I, my, I I know it's you because that's your face uh, from 2016 <laughs> doing cringe videos. Good. So look those up. And you know when you and that's another lesson for the kids that are listening. And when you put stuff up on YouTube, it's out there forever and ever and ever. Even if you do take it down from YouTube, it's going to be caught exactly. someplace else. Exactly. <laughs> cringe videos. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good buddy from Hot Springs that I grew up with. Fantastic, because man. He's, he's something. Well, it sounds like the bad's on, band's on hold for a minute. Yep. So, uh, you know, things the are... films are on hold for a minute. Films on hold. I mean, so, I mean, going into the films, you made that one documentary. Did anything else come up, come up from that? Uh, yeah, I was about to film a little short film. Yeah. Uh, before the... Uh, it was supposed to film on April 18th or 19th, but mm -hmm. that's obviously not going to happen. Um, yeah, I was holding auditions and it just got crazy. So I extended it. Um, but yeah, that was supposed to happen. Um, but Lord knows when that's going to happen now. So that's another yeah. avenue of creativity for you. Jacob Johnston is, is filmmaking as well. Oh, absolutely. Oh man. Absolutely. I mean, so from what you've done is the documentary and this now is, is what you're preparing for? Have you do what? Had you done anything you be in between? Have you filmed anything else? Yeah. Um, so there 
my that uh, film class that I took in high school. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They have a channel. They have a YouTube channel. It's called Lakeside TV. Oh, cool. Um, and it's it they they put all their student films up on there. You'll have to go back, you know, ages upon ages. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, way back uh, about months ago when you uh, when you were in high school, not too long ago, man. <laughs> yeah, hey, four or five years now. <laughs> All right, I found Lakeside TV. They got another subscriber. I'm going to look at... Yeah, but if you go all the way to the very beginning, 2016, 2015, <laughs> um, I did some uh, announcing work with them. That's cool. Um, we, I did announce softball and soccer. Not softball. Volleyball and soccer. Mm-hmm. And made some silent films. Um, we made a, a news... Like, we had like a a lakeside news or whatever that we did um, that I was the executive producer on and uh, made some silent films. What Nothing does an executive good. producer do? Uh, I was just in charge of making sure everybody had their story together, making sure it was all coherent. Um, I shot a story myself, making sure that the anchors, you know, were, were did a decent job on it. Just, Quality control, essentially, and Very cool. giving direction to everybody else. See, I'm learning new stuff. I've never done films. I, I didn't know what an executive producer does. I, I just thought they collected some of the cash since they were the star of the show. I see, uh, you know, Seinfeld as the executive producer of his own show. And, uh, oh, maybe that's just so he can get some extra bucks or retain some rights or something. Right. But, but you actually yeah. stage manage, make sure that people are, are keeping in line. I was kind of like making sure that everything came together correctly and that, that everything that was going into this project was of good quality. So that the final project. Excellent, man. All right, Jacob Johnston. So that's where your life is right now, man. And for the future, the band, the show will go on. Yeah. We will prevail. This little bug won't be will. Us. <laughs> All exactly. right, my man. Uh, well, uh, let the people know how to get a hold of you. Social wise, uh, uh, online, what have you? Uh, I've got Instagram, which is Jacob. D Johnston, um, first name, letter D is in dog Johnston. That's Instagram, Facebook's just my name. Um, the YouTube channel is up there somewhere. Um, <laughs> I can send Dan a link. Yes. Um, and I'm free. Can put I it. will put him in the show notes for show. Sure. Yeah. I, I can send you links to all that as well. You're um, the best. But yeah, my YouTube channel is just my name as well. Um, and I, I got two covers on there that hardly anybody have seen. Yeah, That's I couldn't cool. find your your YouTube channel. I see a lot of Jacob Johnson, so definitely send me that that right link so I can put it out for the people, and they will, I will know. Definitely do so. <laughs> well, it's been good talking to you, man. I know we'll chit chat in the in the future as time progresses, as the band gets bigger and your projects get uh, more and more uh, diverse. Uh, going from when we're famous, oh well, you're you're a little more famous than you than you were uh, as soon as I put this exactly. out. It's it's radio yep. what dot com. What makes you famous? There you go. <laughs> that, that's the concept, if you will. Hopefully, it, it helps to, to to bump you up in in some kind of status, and people get to know. Well, I appreciate you having me about on. You. Oh man, I appreciate you being on. And usually, how I, I finish these things out is is the last words for the people. Uh, do you think we got it, or you have any more avenues uh, to explore? That's that's basically it. That's it right I've been now. Out here rambling for. <laughs> an hour and a half or so and uh yeah i think i think i touched most of it i think you did man all right well uh jacob johnston you get the last words for the people uh, it could be something words to live by or or just something that pops into your head right about now at this moment in time jacob johnston last words for the people man just go out there and do what you love um whether it's just going to be a hobby or if you're going to make it a career keep keep it in your soul if it's music any kind of art whether you love math I don't care. Just do what you love and you will be just fine. Well, there you have it, party people. Jacob Johnston. Find him everywhere. Musician and uh, ooh, a filmmaker and accountant. <laughs> that man's got many avenues of expertise. Uh, lots of, uh, of uh, things he likes to get into you know and like his dad he was a hustler okay <laughs> he's definitely a hustler yeah you, you, you can't do just one thing a creative's got to have his mind working in different directions i know i like to do different things if i get stagnant uh, just doing one thing over and over and over again no that that's not me baby i got to get out there and and do some more stuff so 
yeah, soon this coronavirus will be done and we'll be out there just giggling and laughing with each other and hugging. <laughs> I miss hugs. All right. Uh, stay safe out there and uh, love your love your people, love your family. If you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to uh, give me a call at 501-470-6386 or email info at radiowhat.com. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, radiowhat.com. DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. Be on Radio What. Call 501-470-6386. Say your name, where you're from, and you're listening to what? The music you want is on RadioWhat.com. If you like what you hear, follow What Makes You Famous social media. Use the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Follow on Facebook at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Instagram at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Twitter at Makes Famous. And follow on YouTube at Keys Dan. Leave What Makes You Famous podcast a review and subscribe. Listen to What Makes You Famous podcast on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, and almost anywhere you find podcasts. Tell your story on my podcast, What Makes You Famous. Call 501-470-6386 and leave a message to set up a time. You can support What Makes You Famous using the PayPal link, paypal.me forward slash keys dan email info at radio what.com what makes you famous podcast is a production of keys dan enterprises incorporated at keys dan.com thank you for listening radio what the music you want with some great, great quotes setting a good example for children takes all the fun out of middle age william feather the music you want radio what.com <laughs>